Welcome back to Naval Action and episode 66 of A Letter to the King. If you're new to A Letter to the King, it's my attempt to keep us up to date with what's happening on the global PvP server, the server that never sleeps. Let's get straight into it and see where we were at the start of the week. If you recall, the Americans and the Brits had basically cut the Gulf in half and the last of the Spanish ports was left um, between them, uh, proving to be a troublesome port in which to um, find happy fleets to biff. Um, the pirates had started to move into the Bahamas and were threatening a lot of the British holdings up here. Uh, the Frenchies were clinging on to Haiti. Um, for some reason, Ponce was still in Spanish hands. No one really knows why. The Dutch had completed staking out their territories and the French and the Danes were up to some sort of malarkey that was very difficult to pin a finger on. Now, um, I'm kind of new, I guess, to doing Letter to the King on Global. A few of you may have watched the Euro edition that I did. Um, it's been a month now since the wipe, so I did prior to the wipe. So for those of you on Global, I cover as much as I can. I try to do it reasonably balanced. I'm obviously a Brit captain, so I'm bound to be inherently biased no matter how balanced I try to be. Um, I can't cover action I'm oblivious to, um, despite my own self-aggrandized um, illusions. Um, I'm not omnipresent, so I do rely on folks sending me um, information. So um, I've had a chat in the French nation keeping me appraised of goings on over there and also I've had uh, the odd pirates send me screenshots from their uh, endeavours and I'm very grateful to that. Um, so if you're involved in a port battle and you want it reported and it's not up on any of the forums as a video then please uh, feel free on the forums, uh, Jaheel username, send me a, a message or whatever and um, I'll, I'll be able to use that material to keep the rest of the server and the rest of the community up to date. So I do apologise if you've been in some sterling action and I'm somewhat oblivious to it, um, or if there's been intrigue in your own neck of the woods and again I'm oblivious to it. I, I, I do furtle around and try and find out what's happened, I scan forums, I speak to lots and lots of players, but I am a bit of a noob on the global server and as such uh, my tendrils only reach, reach so far. So with those disclaimers aside let's get in to what is going on and I've decided this infographic of mine isn't going to survive uh, particularly well. So the Brits have got very grumpy and declared war on the Americans um, with their recent attacks on uh, French holdings we can say they're pretty much at war with the French and the pirates and the Brits have got to be considered at war now given what we'll see is happening in the Bahamas and before I carry on I need to just point something out in an attempt to uh, be a very reasonable chap, um, I have uh, my wife's friends staying with us at the moment, and one of them is French. So there you go, that's a bit of a cultural shock for me. So at any the moment you may hear lots of children noises in the background, I apologise, Jaheel's lovely cabin of solitude has been invaded by little tiny people who seem to be incapable of controlling their volume or indeed um, ability to throw things at me. Um, so back to war in the Caribbean rather than in Jaheel's cabin. Uh, the Brits and the pirates can be considered at war. Um, the Brits and the Americans are at war. And one would have to call it the Brits and the French are at war. Um, I described France as a vessel of the Danes last week. I was told it was closer to a friends with benefits arrangement. I'm not quite sure if that's true. Uh, we'll get to more of that at the moment. But I think we would have to describe the French and Danes at war right now. Uh, the pirates and the Danes seem to still maintain, a, it's probably slipping away from being an active alliance and probably closer to a neutral non-aggression pact. Um, the Dutch seem friendly with as many people as they can be. And I think the Swedes are too. The Swedes did take a Danish port this week, but I think that was an arranged flip. I'd be happy. Here they come. Here comes the invading tribes. Um, the independent state of Dave has, has, has been seconded by the Iroquois 
uh, Aboriginal American nation or native Aboriginal American nation who were staging out of the only remaining Spanish port and running around snotting people with gay abandon. And I've had to create a new status this week of at war with self. And indeed the French somehow have managed to declare war on themselves and we'll get into that uh, shortly. So this seems to be what's going on. Uh, the good news is it's on and global. Uh, we've had the first round of somewhat contested port battles. We're beginning to see the muscle that each nation offers. Um, we're beginning to see some handsome fleets. And for the first time with any gusto, um, sort of anti-hostility anti fleets are beginning to appear on the oceans. And, and this all bodes well. Uh, and boats for fun. Uh, as much as it's, you know, never a smart thing to be in three wars at the same time, the Brits are somewhat of a dominant force on the server. And as such, I'm pretty happy because it encourages um, more stuff to happen. Okay, so let's have a look at what's been going on this week. Well, first of all, the Americans managed to snaffle up the the last port um, out here in, in, the, in the Gulf. Uh, and I think it's Nuovo Santa something or other. Uh, but this last port over here. Uh, the pirates went on a bit of a, a bit of an island hopping cruise. And they smashed the Brits pretty much out of the entire uh, Bahamas region. And a little bit more to be honest. Um, now there was sort of a pitiful resistance here. There was a better resistance at Nassau. Uh, which I think is this one from memory, this one or this one. It's hard to do it without the float over, eh? Um, there was a better resistance at Nassau, but it was still, I think, a two-to-one to the pirates. The Brits also did try and curtail the hostility raising there, and there was a fair amount of open water biffo to be had. Um, but the pirates have basically mopped the Brits up in the north. And, and then this does open the door to where will the pirates go next? So now that they've pretty much secured themselves a decent holding. We know they've got a good fleet. Um, with the Brits having a go at the Americans, will the pirates take the opportunity to eat into the Americans? Uh, will they go after the Brits and try and stretch them further? Or will they have a crack at the Danes and go for dominance on, uh, on and around Haiti? So very interesting to see where the pirates go. They've certainly got themselves a lot of conquest marks coming in. They've They've captured a fair number of ports. They seem to have two or three clans who are pretty well organised and reasonably well shipped up now. Um, and they're possibly one of the more, ironically given that they're a rabble of pirates, uh, one of the better open world coordinated nations at the moment. Um, and, and maybe that's in their bones as it were. So the pirates have had a good week. Um, that's the Brits getting kicked out of Nassau. Uh, like I say, I think that was like a two to one ratio battle. I think the Brits lost seven to the Pirates four. Um, the French are in a tiz, probably the best way to describe it. So one of the French clans or a couple of the French clans tried to set up a bit of a deal with the Danes to agitate each other's ports so as to maximize conquest marks. Now. There's two sides to every croissant and every story. Um, one of the one of the one of the angles is that um, some of the French were attacking Danish traders uh, and, and weren't really partaking in the friends with benefits type of arrangement. Uh, the other story is that the Danes flipped ports they were only meant to aggravate or took ports that other French hadn't really agreed to. Now I've 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 got a couple of three. Um, insights into this from the forums and from a couple of people who've been mailing me and I'm much obliged to both sources. Um, by all accounts the French clan that was working with the Danes has either left France or it's rumoured it might be leaving France to go and join the Danes proper. There was even stories that they might join the Dutch. Um, and this has led to the Danes um, actually calling out a non-aggression pact overtly with the Brits while they try and sort out whatever is going on down here. Um, so really at the moment we have to describe the Danes and the French at war. 
Um, if you look at the port fall over the last two or three weeks, you'd have to say it's the French who are coming off the worst from this at the moment. Now, we do have the French raising hostility on Basse-Terre. Now, whether or not the Danes will give them that back, we'll have to see. Uh, but at the moment, it's on down here between the French and the Danes, and uh, between the French and the French somehow, so well done. Um, meanwhile, the French met the Brits at Les Cays. Now, in my previous war, which was on the other server, Les Cays was almost the last action of that war, and the Brits never managed to take it. So it was, for some of us who've come over and are enjoying Global, um, it was a, a huge coordinated effort. We had clans coming from three points of the compass to arrive at Les Cays. They came in from the southeast to try and deter any likelihood of screeners um, over here. Sorry, they came in from, from the southeast in order to deter any uh, screeners from the west. Uh, a reasonable British screening force was sent to assist with the deployment. But in the end, there was only a dozen French in the port, <coughs> a very mixed fleet. Perhaps uh, half of them were in fourth rates and half of them were in fifth rates. Um, but I have to tip my hat to the French who did turn up. Um, because when you turn up and there's 12 of you and you see the opposing force, I think there was 20 fourth rates in the Brits fleet. And um, a mortar brig and then some quick ships. Um, maybe a couple of indies, they're not really quick, and a couple of surprises from memory. Um, it, it would be personally perfectly reasonable to say, bugger this in French, or merde, and run. But instead, they gave us a bit of a biff. Um, nothing too spectacular. They, I think in the end they only lost two ships. The rest managed to slip away as the Brits were struggling into what was it, actually a terrible wind if the French had defended it with 25. Um, certainly a terrible wind to enter the port from the southeast with and then it turned worse so if that had been a fully contested battle um, it would have been very difficult for the attackers but as it was the French were thrown out of Les Cays which gives uh, the Brits a holding on Haiti and it does leave the French in a tricky situation they only have one port now in Les Cays and in, in, in on Haiti and if they were to lose that they would be trapped in the Antilles Sandwich between the Dutch, um, who at the moment are looking like a nation struggling for enough numbers to surge. And the Danes, who, uh, as we've seen, have been rather brutal towards the French. Um, the Brits did have a little go at the weekend at raising hostility in Les Cays. And a very impressive anti-hostility fleet emerged to thrash the Brits, uh, including um, yours truly, um, in open world Biffo, um, and uh, hostility was quickly returned to zero in two or three engagements. So I think the French are in a spot of bother, and I think the Brits would be mad if they didn't go for Pap, uh, Port-au-Prince, um, which was actually when I first started playing the game. This was my home port, was Port-au-Prince. Uh, so for me, it has a little bit of sort of uh, sentimental value. Now, whether or not the pirates might have a crack at it, whether or not the Brits will have a crack at it, uh, I think the Brits have been mad not to push the French off Haiti and get rid of the uh, pesky French from their borders while they're fighting the Americans and with the threat of the black uh, closing in on them. So we'll have to see what happens there. Um, I know that the French have good ships in the region. When they gave us a spank in the other day, there was a number of Connies and Aggies on the water. And, um, and they knew how to use them. So um, this will be interesting. This would be a big loss for the French. Um, and if the Brits could take it, a huge win for the Brits. If the Pirates could take it, um, I don't know why they would. Only, I guess, to put pressure on the Brits further. Um, or they might like it. it's actually a great little trading alley along here um, and of course you've got the free port near it um, the Spanish were kicked out of Ponts by the Danes more free conquest marks for them um, and the Swedes snagged up a port off the um, the oh, what's it called is it um, no I can't remember but the Swedes snagged up a port uh, up here Boven wins maybe um, from the Danes, again, I don't know if that was pre-arranged, a deal or whatever. 
Um, so the Swedes are scrabbling away on tiddly fart conquest marks there. Uh, I mean, there was even rumours here that the um, the Danes were paying the French in conquest marks after capping, but they were only paying the friendly ones. There's all sorts of shenanigans going on down here. Uh, the Dutch, bit of a no-show really this week after pushing out their borders. So I'm not 100% sure. I, I know some of the players who historically I would assign to being Dutch are now with the British nation. So I'm not sure if this is a hollow clog um, or if it has a great big sweaty foot in it. We will see. Um, at the moment, it's a nation that certainly if it got numbers, um, has a reasonable amount of land already uh, and good trading down here, good ports down here. So that'd be interesting. Um, and the other thing is that the events are back. Um, so this seems to be the second event. There must have been one today. I was at work, bastards, doing an event while she heals at work. No need for that. Uh, there was one, one or two days ago, and it was around, let me just think. It was around, doo -doo -doo -doo, it was around here. Um, and this is the event where you sail to the event, uh, scattered around, and it seems to be further apart than it was pre-wipe. Scattered around, there are a number of shipwrecks. Each shipwreck contains a small number of dead men's chests. The dead men's chests are very heavy. They weigh um, 1,500 units of weight. So you need a trader's brig or an Indiaman, really, if you're going to get in there and get out. Um, but buyer beware or sailor beware, other nations will go in there and maybe they don't have a trader and they will try and cap your loot. Um, I went in there and managed to snag up a dead man's chest, made it back to port and I was very excited until I discovered I had an indefatigable blueprint, which of course is about as much use as a, a chocolate fire guard and an indefatigable permit to rub salt into the wound. Uh, but thankfully I got an Agen Mem Nom Nom note. Uh, however, when I went back out to help one of my mates, he was attacked um, by 15 pirates. Um, so I, 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 I did wish him good luck. Um, and, and then between them, they lost their trading ship and a protecting Aggie, which was a disaster. Um, so the lovely Aggie that I'd got from the dead man's chest was promptly handed over to my clanmate. Um, so the dead man's chest events are back now. Are they worth doing? Look, I don't know what the numbers are in the new ones. I would say there's probably 8 to 16 ships in there, and each one holds a couple or three dead man's chests. In them are notes, blueprints, and permits. Um, the notes give you the ship um, of the type. I got an Agamemnon. It was quite a nice one. I think it was Live Oak, White Oak, or was it? No, no, that's right. It was White Oak and Mahogany, I think. So it was okay. Um, it was a reasonable build. It wasn't like fur teak or anything drunk. Uh, I know that there were ocean BPs and ocean notes and Santi notes kicking around. So typically it's a good fourth rate, a good first rate, and I'm hoping the heavy rattler notes might be in there as well. So you get a chance to get a BP, you get a chance to get a note, you get a chance to get a permit. There may be the odd mod in there, I'm not 100% sure. There may be paint in there. I'm not 100% sure. I hope so. I really enjoyed having um, ship paints as I sailed around in my big puff palace, the Pink Victory. Um, lovely, all eating quiche on the deck. Um, so we'll have to keep our eye out for these. But it is, um, you know, I must admit I went with a trader's brig because I, I wasn't 100 miles away when it popped, thankfully. Bit of luck. Um, I was probably 15 minutes sail away as it was. I was, I was actually picking up a bottle um, in my trader's brig. So I managed to get there pretty quickly. Um, but I would be tempted to take a biffing ship and try and steal an enemy trader. So I'd, I'd because uh, that way you get a ship and you get a dead man's chest. And if you don't get a dead man's chest, you can then, then sail around in their trading ship and loot up with your biffing ship um, in fleet. So you might want to like coordinate and join up with fellow nationals and rush from shipwreck to shipwreck um, while protecting each other. Of course, the downside of that is you then have to squabble as to who gets access to the loot. 
um, which leads to people to go off and, and greed um, wins. They go off to get their own loot. And that's, of course, when the people with the fighting ships will pounce. Um, anyway, the events are back. Um, what's going to happen next week? Uh, oh, sorry, where's the open world hotspots, I should say? So there's a number of them at the moment. Um, you know, where as a trader, you've got to beware. Um, Kingston, Port Royal, anywhere around Mortimer Town and really Haiti and the south tip of Cuba. Uh, the Bahamas, although now it's all black, maybe that won't be such a big deal. Uh, off the tip of um, Dave or the Iroquois Nation. Um, American waters are always harangued by pesky pirates. Um, and I understand over here it's all a bit hairy testicles with the Danes and the French snotting each other left, right and centre. Um, where will we see the Biffo next week? Well, the Brits and the Americans are at war for the Gulf. And the Brits have laid claim to the Gulf using some fairly, I have to be honest, uh, I'm all up for war. Uh, they were fairly wonky excuses. Uh, some deal was struck, someone broke a non-disclosure agreement that no one seemed to know about, and that was enough for war. Uh, damn them, I say. Whatever the reason, damn them, they shall burn. Um, so the Americans will give the Brits a run for the money. Um, they demonstrated that when the Brits tried to raise hostility uh, at Gasparilla and promptly got their asses handed to them. I think they lost five ships to maybe one of the um, defending ships. Um, uh, I would be the uncle of a monkey if we didn't see action in and around Port-au-Prince. Um, and uh, the French self-flagellation um, with, with, with Danish sauce, one can only imagine, will continue um, in the Windward Islands. So I think they're the obvious hotspots. Uh, I have to say, big question mark as to what the pirates will do. Bit of a question mark as to what the Danes will do. And are the Dutch up for a biff? We shall find out next week. Um, what's been happening in general with Devness and in general with Global? So the, probably the big controversial thing was the patch this week that combined PvP and PvE marks into combat marks, um, which took away a lot of the splendour of being a PvPer. You would, as a PvPer, you could get access more easily and indeed exclusively to, you know, something like the Constitution. And and, and, and many of the mods, the um, the figureheads and some of the mods, which were PvP marks, um, were to some extent a sort of badge of PvP-ness, which doesn't sound right anyway you say it. Um, and by combining them, that's gone a bit. And, and basically, if you kill someone in PvP, you get twice as many combat marks. That seems a bit miffy to me. I don't mind PvP as being rewarded with special EP feathers in their cap. Um, I, I, I basically, um, I'm not a big fan of welfare epics, as it were, um, to use another game's terminology. So, um, look, it's good we can all sell a Connie now, because Connies are nice, aren't they? And it's good having access to all the things through grinding PvE fleets. But for me, it was a little bit of a surprise. Um, I'd, uh, oh, the other thing, of course, they did was uh, the ship grind has gone. I should have put that up there. The ship grind's gone, and that's just because I was three friggin... I think I might mention this last week, actually, in hindsight. I think that was last week. I was only three missions away from opening up my final slot, so buggers. Um, at the return of the event... Uh, just a, a general thing, by the way. Now I have got access to fourth and first rates uh, due to... Um, working with my wonderful clan um money is much less of an issue um you can um by grinding the pve missions and i don't call it grinding because i have good fun but i know people you know it's, it's all a grind or a gank in it if you're a moany twat um by doing the pve missions um you can earn good money so you can earn like you can easily earn 30k in a fourth rate single mission you can earn 80 or 90k in a fourth rate fleet mission uh, you can earn 150k in a first-rate fleet mission um, if you've got the nut nuts for it. Um, and you get lots of marks while you're at it. So I have to say, since and it took a lot of effort to give birth to my darling, beautiful, gorgeous victory, um, but it pays money in spades. 
Um, I have noticed that there's still no fourth rates or third rates or first rates hitting the markets at KPR. And I think that's just demonstrative at the moment of probably three things. Um, losing a ship is bad, uh, really bad, because now you have to build it again. I do think nations will quickly exhaust themselves of their fleets. Um, secondly, uh, people are still establishing and shipping up. We are seeing nations shipping up now. Like I said, the French out of Les Cays, uh, not Les Cays, out of Pap, or in fact, I think it was Jack Mel or Neeps they came out of. Uh, they came out in a nice mix of fourth rates, some Connies and Aggies. Uh, so they're beginning to ship up and taking. I, I captured a French Aggie um, over the week, and it's wow, it's such a prize when you catch. Uh, a fourth rate, you know, it's three days worth of crafting and all that money. Um, numbers on global are remaining steady, and I like to think we're a smaller community than the other server. Um, but actually, at my peak time, we're a, we're actually a slightly larger community. Uh, we have steady numbers, and our battles matter um, because we are small, and most of us don't have fifteen spare ships. Um, if you meet an enemy fleet and they knock you over uh, those battles matter it hurts man it's bad uh, we can laugh but it's bad it's as it should be you know i mean you have to balance it they are pixels after all right so i mean think about real world and it's all horrible out there um to be honest um but uh from a gaming perspective you lose an aggie ouch you lose a first rate very 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 ouch um i've noticed um across i've I sail quite often in baddy waters. Um, and I've noticed in general, each nation's civil defences are improving. So when enemy ships are sighted in waters, people are pouncing on them more quickly. And finally, and joyously, our, our wonderful server is at war, be it the French and the Danes, be it the Brits and the Yanks, be it the Brits and the French... All those pesky pirates stealing all of our lovely, jubbly Caribbean islands. Um, we are at war. Let's have a look what that war meant for the nations. Oh, first of all, oh Christ, I need to remember the sequence. A uh, little bit of community love. Um, could I recommend you keep up with the global server news? So again, it's on the Games Labs forums. You can get there yourselves. You're all big boys and girls. Um... It's in the national news section, and we have our own little global server news here. And you'll see this is where nations, um, or, or quite often clans on behalf of other clans, because we're not quite cohesive nations. Um, you know, treacherous Danes, and, and this was the uh, the, Dan the the French Intifada, I believe is the correct term. Someone will correct me if that's wrong. That's uh, obscure and rather bizarre and drunk. Transylvanian reference, not sure. Uh, the British and Danish non-aggression pact. So this is where you can keep tabs with the sort of pseudo semi quasi official status of the nations in in and on our lovely server. Uh, let's have a look at the tally of splinters, sail and blood and what happened here. And you know what? I don't think I moved around. Ah, oh, Jaheel, you're a joke. I didn't move these two guys around here. Look at that. Uh, anyway, the Brits lost ports thanks to the pesky pirates and uh, gallivanting across the islands. The pirates made good numbers. Uh, the Brits' numbers were softened a bit by taking some ports off the Frenchies. The Danes also took some ports off the Frenchies. The, Fren the Americans snaffled up Dave's last ports, uh, them and the Danes snaffling up uh, the last ports in the Gulf and Ponce fell. Uh, the Swedes, this was right at the start of the week and I think that was Boven wins, but I could be wrong. It was more or less Boven wins. I don't believe it was contested. I think it was a, a lovely swap. I'll have to remember to swap these around here. Um, and that's about the size of it. So the pirates are rocking it. Uh, the Americans, um, will they be able to maintain their thrust? We shall see. Um, the Danes are going well. The French, they need to get their shit together because they cannot be fighting themselves and the British and the Danes. The Dutch, are oh, they a hollow clog? Uh, and the Swedes, where will they go? I think we're looking here at the three primary warring nations... I think the French are an aspiring warring nation, but they need to get the shit sorted out. The Danes seem to be um, uh, sort of 
What are those fish called in Star Wars? They're like a trading nation who war if they have to. Uh, they've certainly caused much biffo with the French. So that's it for this week's naval action. Um, please keep me informed of what's going on in your nation. I apologise if I've missed something that happened in your nation that was epic and your personal uh, EPN has not been stroked. I apologise for that. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Give us a like, give us a subscribe. I'll see you on the ocean and I'll catch you.